All right, we're going on live. Uh, welcome everyone. So we have online some teachers and some students and welcome, welcome. And I compiled uh, some questions. So we'll have teachers contribute to answering these questions. So let me share my screen. Well, let me first, uh, uh, let's introduce some of our teachers first. Uh, I don't know how to not share now. <laughs> let me share my screen. So, well, as you can see my screen and we can also start talking. So online we have Dipendra. Uh, please introduce Hello. yourself briefly. Hello, namaste everybody. My name is Dipendra Bhatta and I'm from Nepal. In Nepal, you know, it's yoga. We don't have to go to any studio to learn. We don't have to go to any studio to learn yoga, you know, it's in our culture. I actually learned from my grandfather and from my uncles. And then we also have uh, classes in the temples, you know, it's not a class, you know, it's kind of ritual, like you can't go there and you talk about yoga, you learn about yoga there. And lately, there is a great guru in India, his name is Swami Ramdev, and he has like thousands of followers, we used to have class of 10,000, 20,000 people with him, you know. So lately, I worked with him from 2004. And till now I'm with him and in 2012, I was awarded a master's degree in yoga from India, Haridwar. In 2014, I came back and till then, still, till now, it's my bread and butter actually. <laughs> my living and I really enjoy my job because we give people joyfulness, happiness, good health. So here I am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mary. Thank you, Dipendra. Dipendra is my guru. I started teaching because of him. I studied under his guidance for my 300 hour training. Thank you. Yes, and Abby, and thank please. Thank you too. She actually is my guru in the internet. <laughs> she is my guru. <laughs> thank you, Mary. <laughs> Abby. Yes, I am Abby Turner. I have an online yoga studio called Yoga Traveler. And um, well, let's see, I've been teaching for nine years and uh, practicing for about 12. And I started my online program because I'm a military spouse. My husband's in the Air Force and we move every two to three years. And I wanted a way to connect with people that I meet and leave behind. And um, I believe in making yoga adaptable to everybody. I feel like it's something that can last through our whole lifetime and it just changes with the changes of our body. And um, it's more than just exercise. It's a lifestyle and it's a way of, of being. So I love yoga. <laughs> Thank you so much. And Soraya, would you like to introduce yourself? Namaste everyone, my name is Soraya and I'm a yoga teacher uh, living here in Los Angeles and um, Deependra is also my guru as well. <laughs> I uh, studied under him and um, I received my certification to be a teacher in 2018. So I'm still relatively new to teaching <laughs> but I absolutely love yoga and um, it's completely changed my life. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's get into the questions I compiled so that we can share with the audience a lot of beginners in the group and they have asked many similar questions and we'll have teachers chime in for their answers. And we also have another audience here online live. And please, if you are commenting on the YouTube live, you can make the comments so we'll watch to answer your questions as well. So let's have our audience, Fai, can you pick one question from the list? How about the first one? How do I start? 
<laughs> That's a very good question. So gurus, please start answering and uh, give your ideas for the people who have that question. How do I start? That's such a broad question. I think it's hard to answer um, in a, in succinct, succinctly. I think it's helpful to get with a teacher, especially for beginners, who understands really well how to break down poses. Um, a lot of times we see poses on YouTube or Instagram, and they're the showy things, and that's not what yoga is all about. And it, of course, it's not just about movement. Um, there's so much to start with breath work. And I think probably that's where you should start learning how to breathe because the breath will tell us and guide us how we can move through our bodies, through the, the asana, the physical movement of the practice. So get with a good teacher who knows how to begin with breath and how to guide you through uh, really listening to your body and what your body needs. That's awesome. Um, Dipendra, can you give some tips to people who actually don't know how to start at all? What do people do in Nepal? Uh, if you could unmute yourself. Yes, so... <clears throat> If we talk about how to start yoga, you know, you can even start drinking a coffee and realizing the smell, you realizing the color. Call these days with the physical uh, posters, they call it yoga. I talk about that yoga now. Start from the micro exercises, like every joint of the finger, wrist, elbow, shoulder, your spine, your toes, your ankles, your knees, your hip joints. We try to move all the joints, start very slowly, okay? Don't go to deep like headstand and, you know, strong forward bends, strong side bends. No, that's not the way to start. You can even, I will recommend, you know, if you love dancing, dance a little bit. You know, and don't just dance don't listen to the music love cycling you cycle you do yoga even during cycling you know you know so Dependra, i think your um, your internet is a bit delayed and i'm thinking about us it's not yoga even talking to a person can be a yoga if you can So, but physical yoga, I'll definitely recommend. The time is coming in the ancient scriptures, you know, in the yoga scriptures, they say don't start yoga in the winter. Now winter is going. And for the beginners, it's, even now it's not the right time. Maybe April will be the right time for the complete beginner to start if they don't have any sports background. Otherwise, slowly, if you have a sports background, you start from every joint start from the top to the bottom or bottom to the top and bring awareness. If I'm working at the, my finger, I must be with my finger. If I'm working with the wrist, I must be with the wrist, okay? Whatever we work and don't force yourself. Do it so gently, so lovingly that you are really enjoying it, you know? Yoga is to make yourself blissful. And another thing, do be aware of your breathings. Awareness on the body, awareness on the breathing, that's the starting point to do this asana yoga okay the physical yoga so that's i think really that will good. be a good yeah good thank idea you idea to start slowly yeah that's a great advice i think a lot of people um before start they already start to think uh, how do i do split how do i do headstand right those are really mm -hmm. ambitious goals but they always forget um when you start it has to be gentle and it's a lot of times it's the gentle part that makes you feel joyful not the hard working part the hard working part a lot of times turns people away from it which could be very beneficial if they start in the right way great thank you so the second question is uh, often people say is it safe to learn from youtube videos because there are so many resources now on YouTube, people can just find for free 
Um, what do you think, Abby? I think um, it would just uh, depend on the way that the teacher, again, uh, breaks down the poses, maybe shows lots of modifications. Um, I don't do a whole lot of searching around on YouTube. I might not be the best one to answer this one, but um, I think uh, figuring out maybe what the teacher, what the focus of the lesson is that is being shared on YouTube um, and, and trying to learn how your body needs to adapt to that with modifications. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. So I think maybe for this, it's probably more appropriate for uh, a teacher like Soraya because she's living in the modern technology in the Western world. So maybe she can shed some lights on this. Sure. So is it safe to learn from YouTube videos? I say it really depends. Um, if you have any pre-existing like health conditions or injuries, you know, it may be best to study one-on-one -on -one with a teacher online first or even just in a group class virtually. I know we're kind of limited with in-person classes right now, but it's best to make sure that you don't injure yourself and um, to have someone who's there guiding you and who can see how you're entering and exiting each pose and um, I think that um, if you are going to use YouTube as a resource, just be very gentle with yourself and remember that yoga is not about pushing. It's just relaxing. And I think earlier we um, mentioned surrendering, just surrendering into every asana and um, just allowing yourself to be just how you are right now. I know from my personal experience, when I started practicing yoga, I uh, often push myself way too much. And so um, that's not what yoga is. And so um, when you do that, especially right now during the winter, um, it's higher chance for injury. So please, if you're going to start, especially if you're going to start from YouTube, um, please be gentle with yourself and um, take care and listen to your body signals. That's great advice. Thank you, Soraya. So now next, uh, three questions they're all kind of related and people often say what type of yoga do i practice and how many times do i practice per week and how long should i practice at each time because most of the classes seems to be one hour long and most of youtube videos are between 30 minutes to 60 minutes so how do a complete beginner start from this kind of questions um Abby, can you shed some lights? Sure. I always tell my students that it's better to practice 15 to 20 minutes every day than one hour once a week because you are constantly keeping your body warm and, um, and stretching every day. So you're starting to build up a little bit of flexibility. Um, you're starting to learn how to use your breath to benefit um, as you stretch. and and you won't maybe get burned out or, um, you know, it, it just becomes more like a habit every day, 15 to 20 minutes and um, just start building up some strength and building that flexibility. So I think, I think every day, <laughs> a little bit every day. <laughs> Thank you. And Dipendra Guruji. For for me, you know, I will recommend people to do yoga every moment of their life, you know, because yoga is not the asana that the people understand. But if we talk about the asana, the practice, you know, I will recommend a day of rest. Definitely, because that gives the body the time to, you know, adopt that change. I have seen, you know, practicing every day. I used to give, give off on Sunday and Saturday, but I found for some students, it's best time for Sunday and Saturday, while for others, it was five days. So it depends, you know, people don't just do yoga these days. They also go for cycling. They love, you know, they have different choices. So at least four days is enough if they do. And the class, like every shade are so beautiful, you know, because 15, 20 minutes, you can just pull the time out for it's possible for 
every like busy mother, busy really enough. If the number of minutes you do is not important, it's more important that you work with all the body, you know, like the side bends. Otherwise, we just do the front bend. You know, you, when you are sitting in the chair, you are on the front bend. So a little bit of back bend, a little bit of side bend, a little bit of twist, a little bit of balancing poses and relaxation. I have seen, you know, a lot of students from my class, they used to run away at the Savasana. Savasana is the most important asana. So yes, people think that Savasana is useless, you know, they run away. I say, what the hell, you don't know. Savasana is the most important. It work, can work if you really do how to do savasana you can make every cell of your body rejuvenate you know you can just have that reverberation in your body you know so you have to put all the components yes every set 15 20 meter very good set you know because if you don't have time at least 15 20 minutes but i would recommend it to put the all the components one hour if you are like doing a very strong exercises for them 20 15 minutes may not be enough for them a little bit more you know it depends some people have suffer good stamina you know so yoga is different for every different people you know so that's great answer thank you <laughs> now i got it I, I can do yoga every day just only shavasana lay in bed shavasana every day <laughs> <laughs> thank you guruji <laughs> so here is a lot of people ask um, is yoga good for uh, losing weight or for me in the case i want to gain muscle strength and may maybe muscle density as a weight gain so what do you recommend and when people like especially yoga beginners say i've never done yoga where do i start saraya can you give some uh, insights on this sure mary um about uh, the question number six, the, will will you lose or gain weight when practicing yoga? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, so yes, you can lose and gain weight. <laughs> it really depends on, um, there are many factors that contribute to weight loss or muscle gain, um, such as your nutrition, your mental state, because when you have, you know, a certain state of mind, it produce, produces a certain hormone system that are regulating within your body. And that can cause you to gain or lose weight or just be more relaxed overall, which really helps with digestion and absorption of nutrients. So yoga overall does um, activate uh, parasympathetic dominance quite a bit. Um, which is a part of our autonomic nervous system that allows us to rest and digest. So absolutely, I think you can um, lose weight um, with yoga. And um, I think also by moving your body and creating more mindfulness, you're going to be able to interpret your body's cues much better. So like when you're eating, you might be more mindful as you're eating. You might be more mindful of the taste. Like Guruji said, treating it like a meditation. You can treat drinking your tea or eating a, a fruit as meditation. Um, and so in that you are able to honor and respect when your body is satisfied and has had enough food and um, also honor your signals when you need to eat. So um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So during my training of breath coach training, and I realized what really a lot of portion of the weight loss coming from the breath. So basically your CO2, that's breath out, breathe out. Those are the weight lost in your overall uh, weight loss. So that's why um, breathing exercise can be a very easy way of for weight loss and pranayama overall, it's part of the yoga practice. Yeah, so thank you. And um, next, what people often ask is, do we need yoga props to start with yoga? If I'm a beginner, do I need to buy anything? Um, Abby, can you shed some lights on this? Sure. Um... I think yoga props are helpful, but you can also use things that you have 
around your house um, and kind of build up. I think having a good mat is probably the most essential thing, something that is um, not going to make you slip. <laughs> you don't want to slide when you're from your hands when you're doing yoga. So a mat that you're very comfortable on. I tend to like a thicker mat um, myself, not cushy, but um, a little sturdier. Um, but I also think that when you're a beginner, having some um, yoga props are, are very helpful. A strap is, is great when you do forward folds, put it around your feet to try to reach a little further, but you could also use a towel to do that, um, you know, just from your home. Having a block, a yoga block on the floor can be very helpful in um, chest openers, tight chest, or um, you reaching down for the floor. But again, you could use a stack of books or something. Um, so I wouldn't say to be intimidated by the props. I would, I would say embrace them and, um, uh, and, and do use them if you have them. I think it's just being adaptable um, to the yoga. I love my meditation pillow for, for meditation. I have a hard time sitting on the flat floor. I need a pillow. <laughs> so I, it makes it possible for me. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. That's great advice. Um, I even remember uh, a very famous teacher. She made a video um, tape, a bunch of thick books together to make the blocks at home. So these are very practical ways of using whatever available to you. You don't have to go out to buy the professional gears and everything we can use as a resources. So uh, just be creative. All right, so the next question. So people, when they start, they're like, oh, there are some classes they label as all level. Um, can I go to all level class if I have never done any yoga before? Dipendra, can you help that question? Number, is it number nine? Number 10. Can I attend all level classes when I start? No, 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 no. When you start, you must be very careful not to go to the power yoga, not to go to Ashtanga yoga. You will get injured, you know. Again, like Abby's husband, if you are from military and you are doing very strong drills, you can go to any class, you know, but we don't know who is going to participate. So no, you must just, the beginner's class must be very soft ones, you know. Great so advice. You know, I think yeah. a lot of times our ego mind always say, I can do it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that directs us to the wrong path. And when we get injured, we blame yoga because it's yoga's fault. <laughs> <laughs> so let's pre protect ourselves from being getting injured. Yes. Um, so the number 11 question, what is a yoga workshop different from a yoga class? We see a lot of teachers say, oh, this is, you know, 60 minutes class. And sometimes we see uh, teachers say, oh, it's a sun salutation workshop. What are the differences? Abby? Well, if I was doing a workshop, I can only speak from myself as a teacher, I would probably um, maybe focus on a particular aspect and uh, really get detailed on that aspect. Um, sorry, there's a, my dog came in. <laughs> um, I would, so like if it was a sun salutation, like you mentioned, I would um, really break down um, modifications for it so that everyone could feel comfortable with their body. I would make sure that the breath was um, an integral portion, how we link the breath to the body. So it might um, be more of a, a workshop to me is kind of a, maybe a, more of a stop and go, um, some education about the background of the, of the philosophy even behind the asana, um, that sort of thing. That's great. Thank you so much. Um, I think we have more questions. It just went down. Okay, here. So number 12, uh, can I practice yoga for only five minutes? I would say yes. You can even practice for just one minute. Um, Guruji. Yeah, 
I'm doing nothing. It's better you do five minutes, but uh, I think it won't be enough, you know, because the lifestyle of the person these days is so sedentary. You know, you don't have to move at all. These days, even you can order a pizza to your doorsteps. You know, you don't have to go to buy vegetables. There is no physical movement at all. So five minutes won't be enough, I think. You must at least 20 minutes, 15 minutes, is needed because we eat such a delicious food these days you know you have we have enough money <laughs> the economy has created that thing we eat we need breakfast we need lunch we need snacks we need dinner and you just put the petrol fuel in your car but you are not driving it it's like that you know? so at least drive 15 20 minutes five minutes won't be enough but if you don't do anything five minutes it's okay but <laughs> if you ask how long should I do, I will never recommend five minutes. But if you are doing thank that, you, Guruji. <laughs> yeah, five minutes is better than no minutes. So then there's a, another question that people often ask, especially when they start. They say, Why is meditation so difficult? And um yeah, uh, me as a long time meditator, um, I find it difficult when I start. The reason is not about it's difficult. It's about the perspective of what is difficulty, right? Um, oftentimes when we start meditation, uh, we just think, oh, we cannot think of anything. So we're trying to get rid of thoughts and try to focus on being straight, spine, a lot of focus that makes us actually tense rather than relaxed. So that actually is the difficult part of sitting straight and get rid of thoughts. But truthfully, when you meditate, um, if you just bring your awareness, you are meditating. And that's, to me, it's a lot easier than the common sense of getting rid of thoughts or be uh, sitting in cross leg or certain form. So meditation can be easy and um, can be difficult. It all depends on our perspective. And we can always start by only like one minute of breathing. It's easy enough to start meditating. And as you build up over time, it can be quite difficult, uh, quite advanced as you practice longer. But even to me, after many years of meditating, you ask me for sit for four hours, not moving, it's still very difficult. But sometimes you can even eat mindfully and that's considered a meditation. You can do anything in the form of meditation if you just bring your full awareness to the present moment and embrace whatever comes in and give total acceptance to whatever in front of you. And Guruji, can you shed some lights? Oh yes, please. You know, the main thing about meditation is these days, you know, you have meditation studios, you pay $10 at the counter and get inside and do meditation, you know, so you can, the meditation will definitely be difficult for you, you know, because in Ashtanga Yoga, Patanjali has described that Yama Niyama, if you are a liar, how do you think you can meditate? If you have stolen something in the morning, can you meditate in the evening? No chance, you know. If you eat alcohol, can you meditate? If you do drugs, can you meditate? No, it's not possible, you know. So yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, you know, control over your, you know, attitude, control over your habits, control over your body, control of your breathings and the mind, they are prerequisites to do real meditation, you know, and actually we don't do meditation, it's a state that comes to you, we just try, sit down steadily, the meditation is not done, you know, it must come to you. A person in a teenage, a 15 year old, he has fallen in love for the first time, you know, he don't need anything, he just can meditate on the picture of his boyfriend and girlfriend, you know. If a person of 75, he can just listen to the words of Jesus and he can be meditative, you know. So it depends who you are. 
working, you know, like Mary, if she goes to office, you know, she gets inside office at nine and she comes out at six. She, it's like one hour for her, you know, it's a meditation because she's so much lost in her work. You know, like Sarah is studying and oh, she started at 10 p.m. and it's two, she thought it was just 10 minutes because she's so involved. It, it's up to you what attracts you so much that you just, the part time passes away, you know? So the standard way, okay, you keep the spine straight, you know. Arvinda said you don't need to keep the spine straight. If it attracts you, it can be meditation can be done anyway, you know. So meditation is not difficult because we try to do it, it's difficult, you know. If you just let it happen, meditation is coming out of difficulty, actually, you know. All the difficulties of life, they all go away when you are really in meditation. So uh, we must uh, teach people, teach or we must tell them how to get to the, you can even not teach me meditation to the people, you know, and uh, breathing is the best way to start. You know, if you, if you can focus on your breathings, they automatically calm down. When the breathings calm down, the mind calms down. When the mind calms down, so you automatically become meditative. So breathing is the <laughs> key here again. That's great advice. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. So here comes the next question. Often people ask when they get stressed, anxiety, they just know, um, you know, scientifically proven yoga is really good for releasing stress and anxiety. But what do they do and what type of yoga they can do if they have never done yoga before? Abby, can you shed some light on this? Sure. Um, I, I think that most types of yoga, um, classical types anyway, are going to focus on the breath. And that will be the integral piece of releasing stress and anxiety. Um, so maybe a Hatha style, um, that tends to be definitely more gentle than Ashtanga, um, but it's classical. Or even Iyengar style um, holds the poses for a long time. So you can learn how to breathe through those poses and um, I personally do like some physical movement. I, I need to release stress with the movement. So I do like Ashtanga, but, um, but like, um, Dependra was saying, it's not for beginners necessarily. <laughs> so that, but that, the breath is the most important thing that you can do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so if um, Saraya or Dipendra, if you have any other suggestions and to release stress and anxiety is especially interesting to a lot of people who came to yoga. Um... Sure. Um, so to relieve stress and anxiety, something that I have found very um, transformational for me is practicing mantra chanting. So um, that's accessible to almost everybody because <laughs> you can even just chant in your mind. But um, there's a soothing effect that vibrations of chanting, especially in Sanskrit, will have on the body. And when you're focused on a specific mantra, that is what's floating in your mind. There aren't, there might be other thoughts that come up, but eventually when you keep practicing, um, it kind of slows the mind down and kind of narrows the focus. So you don't hear as much of the chattering. And um, that also involves um, your breathing as well, because when you're chanting uh, or singing, um, you're exhaling longer than you're inhaling. <laughs> so that's um, a natural way to work with uh, relaxing the nervous system. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, so there's other people who say, want to see the future, right? Uh, they say, if I have yoga practices, do I see any changes in the future? Do I body shape change, uh, like losing weight or any other type of change? What can they expect? Guruji? Yoga, you know, in yoga, we talk about the physical body. There will be change in the physical body. You will have a better posture. And, and you know, in stress and anxiety, I will connect this with this question also, you know, when you are worried, what is your, when you are stressed, you know, you are not like this. When you are a winner, you know, you open your chest, isn't it? 
when you do this, you know, you are worried. Mm -hmm. Yes. The postures also define, you know, how you can feel. So the main purpose of yoga is to get transformation with the physical body, mental body, energy body. These are the three existence, you know, you are physically body there. Without mind, the physical body doesn't have any existence, yes? And the energy is there. All these three levels of existence are worked out. And if you also believe on something beyond these three things, you know, you actually get a better connection to the, that higher energy, you know? So it works with all the levels of your existence. Yes. Thank you, Guruji. Thank you. So cons con uh, considering the timing, we have just two more questions. Number 16, do yoga classes usually have music? And if you teach yoga class, do you uh, put in music or do you suggest people to have music? And these are questions from beginners. And if they have never attended a yoga class before, what do you suggest? Actually, you know, if you are doing very super fast class, fast music may motivate you. But if you play Mariah Carey or Michael Jackson, whose words have some meaning, you know, if you play Bob Marley, his words have meaning, isn't it? Then you won't be able to fo focus on your asana, you know? Oh, no woman, no cry. <laughs> oh, what about my girlfriend? <laughs> okay, <laughs> stand up, get up, let's get up from the right. Okay, throw this trump out, yes? You will, you'll start thinking about, you know, that you will be getting out of the yoga practice, you know, if there are some, and the music, you know, very important thing is, if you are taking your students to the meditation, and like there are some flute music that can really calm down the wave of your brain, that's the real, you know, the music has a rhythm that can transform the, wave of your brains if you very know good very you have very good knowledge about the music what kind of wave they can induce in your brain like these days we are using singing balls like saira said mantras you know they can really induce some special wave in your brain if you have that knowledge it's very good to use music in the class but if you are a music lover you have just listened to a music and you loved it, so you are playing in it in your class. I don't think that will help. That will even distract the students. The music must not distract from the, the first requirement. The music must not distract the practitioner. The second, if you are very good at the understanding the brainwave and the music vibrations, it's the perfect to use the music. It depends upon who is doing that, yes? Thank you so much. Um, as a matter of fact, I have multiple friends actually said, I do yoga when I listen to podcast. <laughs> so because, <laughs> um, because their brain really needs some, some feeding into the brain that absorbs information, because if there's no information going to brain, like holding the pose seems to be a bit of a meaningless to them. And this is very common, even for people who have practiced for years. Um, so thank you so much for all the suggestions. And I hope everyone will have some sort of understanding. Doesn't matter what's the journey and when they start it, um, they will get something out of it. And hopefully yoga is not about linking both podcast and the asanas together. <laughs> So the last question, a lot of people say, when I start, how do I know which yoga instructor to pick? There's so many of them. Even on YouTube, there's like yoga with Adrian, yoga with uh, um, Cassandra, and a lot of them are, you know, have millions of followers. They obviously um, are good. So um, who do I pick? Right, Abby? That, that's a hard one. Um, I think um, maybe you look at what kind of style they're teaching. Um, maybe do a little bit of research on the different kinds of yoga styles. Uh, there's, I know there's like quizzes out there about your personality and what, how your personality gravitates to different kinds of yoga styles. Um, 
I, uh, I tend to think that beginners need a very experienced instructor that can um, really lead them through poses so that there's not injury. We've talked about that a little bit. So I would probably look at how long they've been teaching, where, where they've gotten their teaching experience, um, what kinds of styles they teach. That's probably what I was look, would look at for a beginner. Thank you, Abby. Guruji? Again, same thing, you know, it depends from condition to condition. Um, if you do one class with a teacher and at the end of the class, you really felt amazing, wow. As if your mind is so happy, your body is feeling so light, is he is the or she is the perfect instructor for you. You know, it doesn't and um even I, in the beginning, you know, I tell you my experience with yin yoga. I used to think, you know, yin yoga is the lazy people's yoga, you know, and astanga is like really good yoga, you know. But later on, at the end of the yin yoga, you know, my body was like vibrating so strongly, you know, I can feel that energy. I was, oh my God, yin yoga is for me, you know, and I started doing yin yoga for myself and later on I started teaching. So uh, you must check yourself at the end of the class. Yes, definitely. If you are a beginner, don't do the yoga with very uh, strong yoga classes or very fast flows. You know, slower yoga is good for the beginners. But at the end, you check yourself. How did you feel? Maybe even till next day, you know, your body may ache. It means that if you just did it for the first time, it may not, you may not get it exactly, but check yourself at the end of the class. If you really felt great, that is the perfect teacher for you. Thank you, Guruji. Saraya? I think they both made excellent points. Um, yes, I feel like your heart will know when you found the right instructor for you. Um, and it's important to, to try, you know, try out different teachers. And like Guruji said, to just see how you feel afterwards. And you'll know when, um, when someone's able to explain and guide you in a way that resonates with you, because we all have our unique way of expressing our experience. So just listen to um, your heart and observe it for yourself. Great answer. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. And I think, uh, how do I pick in yoga instructor? Pick me. I'm joking. <laughs> so overall, I think the reason um, how I pick is you don't actually pick. You just go out experience. And in different times of the day, in different conditions of your own body, and in different state of your mind, you may really need different instructors to guide you through your practice. And most of the time, the instructor is yourself, right? It's your inner teacher who can teach you the most. So uh, just keep an open mind and open heart. And that's the best, best way to receive the best instructor. So that's my piece of advice. Well, thank you so much for answering these questions for the beginners and or even for anyone who are in the yoga journey. And thank you for being with me. Uh, you can check out the recording later, or if you are in the live, you can, um, I see, uh, I don't see any um, questions so far. So we're done with answering all the questions. Again, we have uh, teacher Abby and teacher Saraya and teacher uh, Dipendra and myself, Mary, the founder of Yoga at Home group, and it's growing so fast, and I'm so happy about it. And this is a very high quality group, and all the admins are working very hard to make it uh, very um, inclusive and compassionate and supportive. So I'm so grateful to have so many teachers in this group to helping uh, all the students out. And thank you, the students, to asking all those questions. They're very valuable. You're not alone. And so many other students can get something out of our QA session. And thank you here. And good day and good night for everyone. Bye-bye.